what is the future for Jenny Dell? Do you want to potentially cover another sport? Like I could see you alongside, actually, I just recently interviewed her and she has a super chill personality. I could see you guys co-hosting together at UFC, Laura Sanko. Would you ever want to do anything with MMA or get involved with the boxing world? What is the future for you, sports reporting, and would you ever take on a sport that you probably don't know much about? Yes. I, and that's what makes this job so fun. And I am so lucky because I've had opportunities to work on sports that I did not know much about and learn about it. And um, for the last three, two years, three years, three years, uh, I've covered the world's strongest man competition for CBS. And it's like, what? Like, so the first year CBS called me and uh, my boss said, hey, got kind of a random one for you. Have you ever watched those world's strongest man competitions? And I'm like, yeah, where they like pull cars and trucks and like, yeah. <laughs> and he was like, would you want to do sideline for it? I was like, yes. And he was like, okay, it's in Africa. And I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, yes, come in. <laughs> so that was three or four years ago. Um, and I've I got to go to the Philippines for it. I got to go to Africa for it. Like it is literally, that's something I never thought I would ever do in my entire life. And you're standing by these, like, I mean, literally the mountain from Game of Thrones is how Thor Julius Bornstein was like one of the guys, but it's like, you're standing next to these like mountain men and doing these interviews and just learning an entire new world is something that I loved doing. Um, I got to work a world robotics competition like just random stuff that I'm like, okay, I know nothing about this. I'm going to just do as much research and learn as much about it as possible. And then just like relish in the experience. Cause when would I ever think I'm going to be in Africa interviewing like a giant human being? Never. <laughs> but like, let's bring it on. So I am willing to try anything. Just ask and I will be there. <laughs> I love it. I'm glad that I asked that question because sometimes people are so stuck with like either uh -huh. just one sport or they're, they're stuck in like this comfort zone where they don't want to explore and it sounds like you literally are just like up for anything I but it sounds like anything. that probably stems from you kind of with like the no pressure like hey man i didn't even want to be on camera to begin with but now i'm just killing it so i'll take on all the fun jobs and see kind of like what happens i think that is so cool i love it i love it that's what makes this job so fun it's like you just never you never know where it's gonna take you and like of course i love football i love basketball i love covering baseball i love like the major sports but like bring on the random ones like i want i want to experience all this stuff you guys are now listening to jenny dell former boston red sox reporter you guys just listen to her talk all about her experience working in Boston as a sideline reporter. She is now currently working for CBS. Please stay tuned because we are going to jump in a little bit and talk about her family life a bit. She is currently married to former Boston Red Sox third baseman, Will Middlebrook. She has two adorable girls. But we know right now that you are currently married to former Boston Red Sox third baseman, Will Middlebrooks. What is it like being married to a professional baseball player, having those two young daughters, meeting him in Boston? Walk us through the steps of what that was like. Ay, ay, ay. Well, this could be a whole hour show. Um, no, Will uh, Will was like, I always laugh because people are like, did you know right when you met him that it was like, that was going to be your husband? I'm like, no, not in the slightest. He was like this little like 23 year old cutie that just came up and was crushing it in Boston. And he was like so sweet and innocent. And um, <laughs> it's just, it's our, our love story should be written into like a fairy tale someday. And I, I hope that we're able to share it from start to finish at some point. But like, once we got to know each other, I think we both knew that there was something special there. And I, you know, people are always like, oh, did you date athletes? And I was like, never, I, and I never would have. And the reason that I was willing to risk it with Will is because I knew that there was a reason that we were brought together and that he was going to eventually be my husband once we like got to know each other well. But, um, it was tough at first. We, so we dated like in secret in Boston for a while. We lived in an apartment together in Southie and like, we would have to leave at different times and we weren't allowed to be seen in public together. And we'd go to the fields at different times. And like his, the, the team knew my, my production crew knew my bosses knew, um, but none of the fans knew. And, 
So I just treated him like every other Red Sox player. Um, you know, if he was struggling, I'd ask him questions about struggling. If he was, if he had to walk off hit, I was interviewing him at the end of the game. And it was like, it was like we had a completely different um, professional and personal life. And uh, I think we did a good job of, of keeping that separate. And then when I was ready to move on, I ended up going to CBS is when we decided to come out like publicly that we were together. And I don't think it was until we actually got engaged in July of 2014 that people were like, oh, wait, they're seriously dating. Like, she's not just like with this Red Sox player. And I'm like, no, like we are seriously together. So we've been we're coming up on our five year wedding anniversary. We have two beautiful daughters, Madison and Mackenzie. Maddie just turned two. Kenzie is about to turn one. So it has been a wild few years um and i wouldn't change it for the world i love our little family and um will unfortunately got hurt in february of 2018 so his baseball career is uh done and um it actually the timing of everything like i feel like everything happens for a reason not that i want him to be hurt or anyone to ever get hurt but he has been able to be home with our daughters and is the most incredible father and we have like a, a solid little family life here. So it's been, it's been amazing. It's been I love how you're opening up about your relationship, relationship and how you guys met obviously while you were a sideline reporter and working in the Boston area. So I wanted to ask you sort of, what was it like, I guess you kind of already described it, having to hide it from the public. Obviously the team probably knew, like you mentioned yeah. and the production company obviously had to know about it, but were you, like at times ever nervous, like, oh my gosh, like if this gets out, I might lose my job. And obviously, like you mentioned, you knew you were going to end up with him. So you were willing to risk your job, which I find super admirable. And like you said, you should like write a book on it because I think this story is so great because here you guys are about to celebrate your fifth wedding anniversary. You guys have two young children and you're still sports reporting. So at the end of the day, when love calls, you got to just go for Run. it. Just do it. Just do um, it. Yeah, no, it was scary. It was scary though. Um, but I was, I, I knew in the back of my mind that I would somehow come out on top. But when I, when we first initially came out publicly, like it was, it was national media and people didn't know that we were living together and didn't know that we were about to get engaged. And um, there was a lot of judgment passed and that was something that was very difficult. And I think that I knew it was going to be okay eventually, but at the time it was very hard. Um, and it, it was also difficult because on the flip side, like Will was getting applauded. He's like, well, you got the Red Sox reporter and here I am getting like shamed and potentially, you know, out of a job um, because people didn't know exactly what was going on. So, so it was, it was a trying I would say six months until kind of the story came out of, of the fact that we were actually in love and going to be together. And then people were like, oh, okay, they did find love. It wasn't just like this sketchy situation. It was, it was tough. There were definitely times where I was like, I don't, I don't know how this is going to go. I don't know what this is going to do to my career, but I also knew, and you know, I'm talking with my parents, like I knew that a career is something that, that you do because you, you know, you, it's something that you love and it's something that provides money and it provides, you know, stability, but like love, if you have like true love, like that's what's most important. So I tried to follow my heart with that one. I'm so happy that we were talking about this because I feel like the Boston fan base, myself, including when I was younger, we were all kind of like, I wonder what's happening, like what's going on. So to hear it like out of your mouth, like we all knew that you guys were dating. Like when the story came out, it's like, you again being as real as you were on the camera like there's no way that it was not real love i mean here you guys are five well i mean you've been together more than five years obviously because yeah. you, you've been married almost five years at this point yeah. with two kids it's eight years something like that <laughs> almost no. a decade together That's weird. Um, i wanted to ask you we'll switch it over to something more positive because obviously you just talked about the stress of meeting each other having to hide your relationship while working with the red sox and him still playing for the red sox what was your first date like? Like, did you guys have to like hide inside because you weren't allowed to be seen in public? Did he take you to dinner? And I want to hear a little bit about the proposal and your wedding because you look stunning. Oh, thank but you. First off, first date. What the first hell was the first date. date like? So first date actually happened 
Uh, it was during a Red Sox Yankee series in New York. Um, our friend lived in a city and she, she knew we were together and she was like, if you want to go to a place that like, no one's going to like, you know, paparazzi you or see you or whatever. She gave us this name of this little wine bar in New York. And Will and I left the hotel, took separate at different times, took separate taxis to this little wine bar. And I don't, I think it actually closed down. It was called Vero. And we sat down and we had like a cheese platter and wine. And that was our first date it was in New York city. Um, it was, I think there was an off night. It must've been, or it might've been after a game. I can't remember. Um, but yeah, that was like the first official date. And I think we both knew then like, okay, like this is, this is something that's going to be a forever situation, which is crazy to think about now. But yeah, so that was first date. And then it was like a lot, we never, we never would go in public in Boston. Like that would never happen. Um, but when we were out on the road, we would try to like, if there were off days or like, you know, breakfast or whatever, we would try to like sneak out and find a spot without people seeing us. So it's so scandalous when you say it, when I say it like this, like that's, but yeah. Um, it almost sounds more fun that you guys had to hide it. Like the grand scheme of things, it probably made it more fun. It made it, it made it fun for the first, like, uh, yeah, for the first like nine months. And then after that, I was like, I just want to like go out and get like a bagel with you in Boston. Like, I'm like, can we just like go get a cup of coffee? And we're like, nope, nope, we can't. And at that point, you're just like, okay, I'm done with this like sneaking around thing. But yeah, it was it. It was wild. It was a wild experience. Uh, and then he proposed. We were in Newport, Rhode Island in 2014 during All Star break. I had no idea it was coming. And he proposed on the Cliff Walk in Newport. If you've ever been there, it is like the most beautiful scene ever. You have like the waves crashing up on one side and like these mansions on the other. And you walk along the cliffs. And um, he actually surprised me after the proposal. Obviously, as a female who just got engaged, you call all your best friends, you call your family, like you're like, oh my God, I just got engaged. Like, here's a picture of the ring. Ah, like, this is what happened. And then we went back to the place where we were staying. And he, I love Mexican food, like Mexican is my favorite. So he was like, I have a, I have dinner reservations at this place, Diego's down on Bowen's Wharf at eight o'clock. And I'm like, yes, like Mexican, awesome. And I walked in and he had surprised me. He flew in his entire family, all my best friends, my goddaughter, um, all my best friends from Connecticut, from Boston, everyone was there, uh, my whole family. And it was like one of the most, I, I was, I've never been so surprised in my life. Like it was one of the most amazing nights of my life, days of my life. And uh, so he nailed it. He like knocked it out of the park with that one. And then we got married about two years later. We were living in Scottsdale, Arizona. We actually only had, everyone's always like, oh. So our anniversary is on Valentine's Day, which was not planned. Like I, and for everyone who's planned it, like good for you. We are just like not that couple that's like, let's get married on Valentine's Day. But it was the literally the only weekend off in 2016. I just had finished working with Super Bowl for CBS the week before, and Will started spring training on Tuesday of the week after. So it was literally, if we wanted to get married anytime that year, that was the only date available. So we got married on Valentine's Day on our one weekend off, and we never got, we didn't go on a honeymoon because we were both working. So um, yeah, <laughs> love it. I totally get it. I totally get it. So you guys are now listening to Jenny Dell. She's talking all about meeting former Boston Red Sox, Will Middlebrooks. He obviously was a third baseman. I have some really cool stats on him. So Will was actually a fifth round draft pick in the 2007 MLB draft. He grew up in Texas. Uh, Will was originally a shortstop, which I found super cool. I found this obviously by doing my research, but was converted into a third baseman by the Red Sox. Super freaking cool. I know that that happens sometimes. So I wanted to ask you, like, how is it experiencing the World Series together? Obviously, you guys were both involved in the 2013 World Series. Did you guys obviously enjoy celebrating it together? Were you guys allowed to celebrate together? Well, so the whole team obviously knew we were together. So after each, like, division win, so after um, the ALCS, after the ALDSCS, and then the World Series, uh, David would throw, David Ortiz would throw like a huge party at his house to celebrate each kind of next step. So 
I was at the parties as Will's girlfriend, but then it's like, oh, but the reporter's here, but everyone was like super cool. And I think that we had a very good understanding of like, listen, I know how to keep my mouth shut on certain things. And like, that's part of my job and you know, whatnot. Um, but it was, those were some of the most like fun events <laughs> that we would be able to celebrate. And then it was funny because after when the Red Sox finally did win at Fenway, I'm down on the field and there's like champagne being popped and, you know, cameras everywhere and whatnot. And all the players were coming up and like giving me big bear hugs. And then I saw Will, who's my serious boyfriend who I live with. And I was like, congratulations, Will. Because I didn't want people to like capture us hugging or any, or people to like question anything. So I'm like hugging everyone else on the team. I'm like, oh my gosh. And then I'm like, Mr. Middlebrook's like, congrats on the world series win how does it feel you know <laughs> so it was it was funny but then we went out that night i don't i mean i don't think anyone on that team or significant others slept for for a while <laughs> but there was it was a good time but uh the initial interaction after they actually won the world series was something i'll never forget <laughs> That's awesome. It sounds like you guys enjoyed celebrating together when you could, especially at the after party with Big yeah. Poppy and some of the former teammates for the 2013 um, World Champions. Speaking of celebrating, we'll kind of wrap up the segment about you and Will because I want to switch on over to Cameron Stewart shortly. But before Love we get into that, again, on the celebration topic, obviously your uh, wedding anniversary is coming up in the cup couple months in February. Do you guys have any um, plans for that? Are you guys going on a vacation? You're going to be home with the kids. What is your celebration going to be like for your upcoming wedding anniversary? So I always said for five years, I wanted to go to Greece. Like that was, I've never been to Greece. I wanted to do like the whole, you know, stay outside and be in a bathtub and looking over the water. <laughs> um, I think due to COVID, we are not going to be traveling. Um, so maybe we'll have a quiet night at home with the kids, or maybe we'll have, you know, someone watch the kids and maybe we can find, we're taking things very serious here in Florida. Um, Will and I have been like pretty strictly quarantined um, for the entire year. So maybe we'll find an outdoor restaurant that has a nice patio that's spaced apart. And we can go out for a dinner outside and celebrate, but we'll see. We have, we haven't set any plans yet. I don't think Greece is happening though. Maybe we'll move that to the 10 year anniversary. <laughs> well, congratulations to both you and Will. It sounds like you guys were able to obviously make your relationship work and obviously both of your careers work because here you are still crushing it in the sports world. So you guys are listening, go for love. Career comes second because at the end of the day, eventually everybody phases out of their jobs and I'd rather have a lifetime of love and children and family versus chasing a job and, and ended up working out and in, in your benefit where you ultimately have both. So again, kind of like with you getting um, the ESPN production assistant job, everything happening, I truly believe was fate for you. And you just like following your own nat natural intuition. I just want to switch it over because I literally found this super cute story. So I don't know if you guys are familiar with this whole situation, but Jenny, again, going off of the fact that she literally is like one of the most sweet-hearted people ever, she actually, back in 2014, and I guess Will must have allowed this to happen, a cute little 16-year-old named Cameron Stewart really wanted to take Jenny to the prom. So apparently, he like set up a whole Twitter campaign to try to get her attention, and during the World Series, supposedly he set up like little post-it notes to try to get her attention. Like he did whatever he could to be like, hey, Jenny, can you come to the prom with me? Apparently he got your attention because you ended up going. What was it like going to a high school prom and basically making this kid's little little kid's dream come to life? Cam Stewart, my guy. So uh, the whole thing started, I forgot, I think it was like, it was a, ha so Twitter had, like Twitter was out, but it was like not what it is today. So he Cam started the hashtag and it was like a ridiculously long hashtag. It was like, have Cam Stewart take Jenny Dell to the prom. Like it wasn't just like something that was like quick and snappy. And I remember that we were, it, was, it all started, we were at a game and my director was like, oh, Jenny, this, this kid has a sign that he wants to take you to prom and there's like a hashtag on it. And so Don and Jerry we were like, oh, Jenny, look at this, blah, blah, blah. And we kind of like made it into like this little thing. And I was like, I need to go find that kid. 
because you know, I don't know. I'm, I was like, I want to go meet him, you know? So I found out where he was sitting and, and, you know, we ended up chatting and he was like, well, can you come to prom? And I was like, well, when is prom? Like I need details and so on and so forth. And he's like, what about if I get, and I, I forgot the number. I don't know if it was like a hundred thousand retweets or whatever it was. He's like, what if I get all these retweets? Will you come to prom? I was like, deal, you know? And so he ended up getting the amount that we agreed upon. And uh, you know, we exchanged contact information. He would he would have people like have the ha the hashtag written on um, post it notes, and randomly people would like come to me at Fenway and like hand me the post it note, like have Cam Stewart take Jenny to the prom, and I'm like, yeah, whatever. Um, so I ended up showing up at Cam's house, and it was Rockland, Rockland High School. And um, first of all, I had to go prom dress shopping, which was very stressful. I'm like, I need to like look good for this prom, you know, but the prom dresses that girls were wearing those days. I mean, I was like, I am not wearing, you know, nothing to the prom. <laughs> I was like, I got to find like a classic, classy dress that maybe I can reuse to wear to like another wedding or something. So I found a dress, showed up to prom. He had the limo, all of his friends. We did the pre pictures, you know, I had the little, I got on the corsage, like we did the whole shebang. And then we went to the prom together. And after, like, we went, it was like dancing, hanging out. Then we had dinner. And he was like, okay, like, you can leave, you know, if you want now. And I was like, leave? I was like, heck no. Like, I am, I'm spending the night here. Like, well, I'm not going anywhere. So we had the best time. He ended up winning Prom King. Uh, we danced the night away. It was so much fun. I loved every second of it. You probably don't know this, but one of my first, jobs was to be a dance motivator at bar and bat mitzvahs in new york and long island so like dancing <laughs> was like just makes me happy so we had so much fun we took the limo back we facetimed will in the limo back so i think cam probably knew before most people that will and i were dating and he was a huge red sox fan so that was like something fun for him and we keep in touch now to this day cam and i he's awesome <laughs> that is so cute. I am so happy that I came across the story because I just find it so cute that you were like, you know what? I'm going to make this kid's dream and so be his prom date and literally just like show up at his house, go to prom. I love how you made like the full night out of it. Oh, yeah. He, he got the FaceTime. Well, like literally you probably made this kid's life. He he said it was like he was like this is the best night of my life. I'm sure he's had much better nights since then, but uh he, we had we had a lot of fun. It was like I think people thought that I was going to like mail it in and go and like take a picture and then leave. I was like, "Oh no, no, no. Like I am I'm dedicated to this prom right here." <laughs> Sounds like a good way to give back to the community as well. And you guys now listening know that the Boss Babes are all about giving back to the community. So Jenny, I wanted to ask you again, going along with the fact that you went to prom with Cameron Stewart, obviously a big fan of yours. I know that you work alongside or used to work alongside the Jimmy Fund, the Greater Boston Food Bank, the Joe Andrewsy Foundation, and you do some public speaking. So let's discuss a little bit how you give back to the community, both in Boston and what you do currently. And I'm sure you and will probably give back a little bit to your, your hometowns, yeah. both Connecticut and Texas. How do you guys yeah. give back to your communities? I think that that when I first started working in television, I was, I always would second guess my career path in the beginning. Cause I'm like, what am I doing to make the world better? Like change the world for the better in any way, you know, I'm just sitting here like talking X's and O's and sports. And then I, especially with working at um, Fenway with Boston, it's like you then have a platform to raise awareness and funds and and so much for these local charities and the Red Sox uh, out of any team that will ever played for was the most charitable organization that I've ever seen and the Jimmy Fund was the forefront of that and I got to meet so many people that work with the Jimmy Fund that I just fell in love with and uh whether it was just like hosting an event for them or you know speaking on their behalf during Red Sox game or donating or doing the Jimmy fund marathon on TV. It's like anything that I could do to help raise money or donate myself uh, in any way just made it all worthwhile. And I think that going to the hospital and doing the visits with the kids and, you know, Will was the Jimmy fund rep for the Red Sox when he was there. And I think that that was just something that was so important to the both of us. And quickly after I worked 
you know, with the Jimmy Fund, my best friend's son was diagnosed with kidney cancer and went to the Jimmy Fund when he's, he was three months old. So it went from being just like something that I did because I wanted to give back to something that now I was seeing like in real life, the effect that they have on people that were living on, you know, kind of the flip side of things. And it made me want to do even more because they're literally one of the most amazing organizations that's out there. And then I was introduced, I was in, uh, introduced to the Joe and Drusy foundation through, through that and the work that they do to, and it, I love what the Andrews do because it's, it's the way that I can explain it in a, in a fast manner is you have to think about all the bills that pile up and not just the medical bills, but for people that have a child that has cancer or is going through something, they have to dedicate themselves to that kid. So they might be out of work or they might be, you know, maybe they're getting help with medical bills, but what about their mortgage and what about their phone bill and what about feeding their families? You know, there's all these things that people don't even think about because they're like, oh, well, maybe I'll donate to help them medically. It's like, okay, but now what about all this other stuff? And that's where the injuries come in and really do an incredible job of, you know, providing funds and awareness to these families. So to be able to host events for them, um, obviously with COVID and, and everything going on, I wasn't able to host this year. I'm hoping to get back out to Boston and they usually host it at, in Foxborough, have the event at Patriots Place or, you know, at Gillette. Giving back in any way possible um, during this quarantine, you know, food drives, that's something that's been huge. So Will and I were able to, you know, sign baseball cards, something that's nothing to us, you know, it takes two seconds and we were able to raise a lot of money for the Greater Boston Food Bank. So it's like anything that we can do to help give back in any way or raise awareness about anything, any organization that needs help, like, like I am all about that. Like I am lucky to have a platform in order to do that. So like, use me, <laughs> that's what I said. I am so, thankful that you guys are able to give back in great ways. Part of the reason why I started this sports podcast is for that specific reason. I think you and I chatted about it a little bit before even starting the show, but way before the pandemic hit, my co-host and I actually used to specifically go to Boston sports charities. And one of them was actually the Joe Andrews Foundation. We are very heavily involved with the Boston Bruins Foundation and work alongside the Celtics and it's just so great to be able to highlight athletes and what they do both on and off the field. And that's a big part of this show. And that's why you and I are talking about it now. So I think it's so cool that you guys are giving back in such a big way, both in the past and the present. And I know we're about to wrap up shortly. So I do want to hit upon some of your food and fun. You guys are now listening to Jenny Dell. This girl kills it at life and she absolutely loves food. We talked about it a little bit earlier how she is a big foodie. So she actually started this really cool, I think it's a blog, uh -huh. but it's called Simply Delicious. So it's obviously a play on words with her maiden last name because now her last name is Middlebrooks, of course, but it's called Simply Delicious. She actually has a page up on Instagram. So if you guys are interested in checking it out, please do. But she started it with her former roommate, Tracy, and it's literally like a, a sick page with all different types of food recipes, Thank sweets, you treats i actually loved the it looks really great i'm gonna actually try it she had something on there called the chia seed pudding oh, it's um, so crispy coconut chicken looked literally to die for and the beef bar barbacoa tacos looked wow. mouth-watering so what was your inspiration behind that what are some of your favorite recipes and let's talk about your roommate tracy and why you guys both started it together so uh when i i going back to when we first started chatting about this, I loved cooking my, my whole life. I've like have a huge passion for cooking. That's like my happy places in the kitchen. And uh, when I was in high school, I started my own catering company called Simply Delicious. So this like dates back way, way, way long time ago. Uh, so I would, I would cater, I was like a high schooler. I cater like local events and I did a wedding and whatever, just like random graduation parties or whatnot. I used to take classes at the Culinary Institute in Connecticut and I used some of those recipes for like my catering events. And then I ended up going to college and got the job at ESPN and ended up on TV and so on and so forth. And um, my roommate, Tracy, who was my roommate at UMass, she ended up moving 15 minutes away from me here in Florida. And we were like, this is wild. So 
our family, she has two young kids. Uh, her husband became quick best friends with my husband. So we would spend every weekend together and we would just cook like a ton of food. Like, oh, we're going to watch a football game. Like, oh, let's make, you know, buffalo chicken dip and blah, blah, blah. And like everything we were making, we were eating, we're like, damn, this is so good. Like we should share these recipes. So we were thinking about it and I was like, well, I used to have this food blog. All right. You know, I used to have this catering company. Now Trace's maiden last name was Simon. So S I M simply delicious. So it's both of our maiden names put together. And we kind of, we we're like, let's just share our recipes with the world. So like we're both working moms. We want like good, amazing, quick, easy, simple, delicious recipes. And we want to share it with everyone. They're family friendly. It's probably stuff you have in your pantry, which has been perfect for the pandemic. Um, and we just started, you know, posting and we started our own YouTube channel. And obviously with everything going on with coronavirus, we haven't been able to get together and cook, but like we're still updating our site and we're hoping to grow our little brand. And we just love it. Like we scheduled off Tuesday mornings from nine till noon. We would get together and we would cook and we'd like post and do videos and whatnot. And it was kind of like our little escape from life and nothing like makes us happier than cooking and eating. So that's what we do. And it's been so fun. So some recipes that you should definitely check out. I would say one of the easiest ones and one of the fan favorites is the honey soy chicken. It literally takes like 15 minutes and you will never get Chinese food takeout ever again. Just saying. You should try it. <laughs> Perfect. Sounds delicious. I'm definitely gonna have to check that out. My boyfriend loves to eat like chicken and rice and usually oh. broccoli or some type of vegetable after a workout. So I'm gonna have to mention that to him. It's so good. And it's like, so much healthier than ordering it. Like it's, you know, what's going into your food. And I'm telling you, it's so simple. Like you gotta give it a try. Amazing. You guys are now listening to Jenny Dell. Again, simply delicious. It's a play on words for both her former roommate, Tracy, for her last name is or used to be Simon and mm -hmm. obviously delicious comes from Dell. You guys can check out their Instagram. They have so many great recipes on there. Please go look at those awesome food recipes. Campus Eats again. Okay. We're just going to keep rolling on with the food train here. So Campus Eats is the TV show and highlights food spots in the Big Ten college areas. How is it working on that TV show? Where did you get to travel to? What did you get? What did you get to try? Like, what, what was that whole experience like being on a food show, especially being a, a crazy foodie like you are? It's literally a dream job. Like, if you think about what your dream job would be, it's like, oh, I want to travel around and like eat really good food and like hang out with cool people. And it's like, oh, here's campus eats. There you go. <laughs> so it's it's crazy the way it came about. The um, so Victory Pictures is the production company that produces campus eats. They were kind of like the mastermind behind the whole show. So I there's. Mike is the head of Victory Pictures. And Mike was my, he was the editor for Monday Night Football when I was a production assistant on Monday Night Football. So my job when I worked on Monday Night Football was to sit in the production truck and we would put together basically these features that would air during the broadcast. So I would sit with this guy, Mike, and we would like be putting footage together, music and clips. And like, he's a creative genius, but we would always talk about food because it's like, that's, you know, who doesn't like to eat. So uh, like seven years after I worked with him, I get a phone call out of the blue and he's like, Hey, Jenny, it's Mike. And I'm like, what? How? Hey, how are you? Like, I haven't talked to you in years. And he's like, question. He's like, do you still like love food? And I was like, yes. And he's like, so I'm pitching this show called Campus Eats. Uh, basically, we're going to highlight some of the best restaurants in Big Ten country. Uh, would you want to host it? And I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, absolutely. So I ended up um, getting paired up with this guy, Troy Johnson, who is a genius and one of my favorite human beings in the entire world. Uh, he probably is most well known. He had a food show on Food Network called Crave for a while. He's one of the top judges for guys grocery games now. He is literally like my brother. Uh, he lives in San Diego, works for San Diego Magazine. Is a, He's just a genius. Um, and he's probably the funniest human being that I've ever been around. And my husband's probably going to get mad at me for saying that. But no, it's Troy. Sorry, Will. Um, and so we travel around. We spend like three months every year traveling around to all the big 10 schools and eating at all the best restaurants there. And there's a sports tie-in. We talk to former athletes who's, who've gone to the schools and they're like, yes, this is where I would get the best burger. And we talk to current coaches and whatnot. And it's literally like we just crush food for three months. And it's the best job in the world. 
<laughs> literally sounds like a dream job. And again, going back to the beginning of our start of our interview, when you said that you wanted to do event marketing, you enjoyed food, you almost went to culinary school. Again, here you are literally getting the opportunity to do everything just <laughs> meshed together in a different way. But you are literally getting to live your dream job in separate ways, of course, but it all kind of just like happened again. I truly believe in fate. And let's say on this food train before we wrap up, guys, game day eats. You guys know that our show is all about game day eats. Obviously, we have a big foodie here. What do you and Will like to eat on Sunday night football, Monday night mm -hmm. football? What do you guys like to cook if you guys are having an at home date night? So Will is a expert griller and smoker. So I pretty much cook breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day. He's very spoiled. Um, but usually on the weekends, like, so I, right now I'm doing college football. So I will get home either very, very late on Saturday night or early on Sunday morning. So like right now it's like, we'll, we'll throw like, you know, pulled pork on the smoker. I'll always make like a buffalo chicken dip or something that you could be like snacky with. And then I always have to have something sweet too. Um, we have these, um, Nutella, these chocolate hazelnut bites that are so good and so easy too to make. Uh, we we like to pick throughout Sunday games, I feel like, instead of having sitting down for like a big meal. So whether we're doing like pulled pork sandwiches, but like snacking along the way, um, you know, homemade pizza, just any any good like game day food we are down for. Sounds like you guys are absolutely crushing those game day eats and positive pop. You obviously are a shining bright light, so you must have loads of positive pop in there. What are some of your favorite positive sayings? Or do you have like a mantra? What is your positive pop? I feel like, so I, I try to always be present. Like that's something that I, that's kind of like my mantra, if you will, is like the be where your feet are. I feel like, um, if you can be present in the moment when you're, you know, whether it's on the field during game day or at home with your family, like put your phone down, just like be present in that moment and dedicate 110% to like exactly what you're doing right there. Obviously my family comes first in, in everything, but for those four hours during the game, like I need to be focused on the game. So I feel like be where your feet are and just like stay present and just be gracious for every opportunity that comes your way. Um, I feel like that's kind of what what gets me, you know, positive and motivated and just present. That is some excellent positive pop. I love all of your game day eats and you absolutely crushed this interview. We're about to wrap up the show. It went a little bit longer than I anticipated. I'm oh, like looking at the time, I'm like, oh my <laughs> gosh. Um, where can people follow your amazing love story, your sports career? Shout out your social media that way people can continue to follow what you are up to in the future. So you can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Jenny Dell. I think they're at Jenny Dell underscore for most of them. Um, someone had at Jenny Dell, but you know, at Jenny Dell underscore, you type it in, you'll see it. And then also the food blog, you can find us at www.simplydelicious.com. It's D-E-L-L-icious.com. We also have our Instagram at Simply Delicious and a Facebook page. Amazing. You were so incredible today. And you guys can obviously follow the Boss Babes. On all forms of social media, please follow Brittany Baldi, your host on all forms of social media. Thank you for listening to us both on Spotify and iTunes and, of course, watching these live streams. Jenny, you are so amazing, and I'm wishing you guys the happiest of upcoming holidays. Thank you so much. Same Thank to you. you.